Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 639. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about the new income tax brackets for 2020. Yes, this information just came out, breaking news. And we have some new income tax brackets, we have some new standard deductions, and some other possible itemized deductions, including the mortgage interest deduction. So we're going to cover what is new, what tax bracket you might find yourself in, and have a little conversation about that. This comes to us from CNBC.com and was written by Alicia Adamsik. And it says the IRS released the federal tax rates and income brackets for 2020 on Wednesday. The seven tax rates remain unchanged, while the income limits have been adjusted for inflation. The tax rates in the U.S. are marginal, meaning that different levels of the same person's income are taxed at different rates. If you and your spouse earn $80,000 in 2020 and are married filing jointly, for example, The first $19,750 of that will be taxed at 10%, and the income over $19,750 will be taxed at 12%. The 2020 tax brackets affect the taxes that will be filed in 2021. Here are the new brackets for 2020, depending on your income and filing status. So there's different categories. The first thing you want to do is listen for which category you're in. The first category is for married individuals filing jointly. The second category is for unmarried individuals. The third category is for heads of households. And the fourth category is for married individuals filing separately. One thing I noticed is that married individuals filing jointly really do get a tax break. So if you're considering getting married, you might want to speed that up so that you can be in a lower tax bracket if that works for you, because there definitely are some tax advantages for being married and filing jointly, mainly that if you earn a high income, you have a much lower tax bracket. So let's talk about what those tax brackets are for married individuals filing jointly. If your taxable income is up to $19,750, you're in a 10% bracket. If you're at $19,750 to $80,250, your bracket's only 12%. If you make $80,250 to $171,050, you're in the 22% bracket. If you earn $171,050 to $326,600, you're in the 24% bracket. Really for that level of income at 326,000 to be in a 24% bracket is pretty incredible. That's very low. The next bracket for married individuals filing jointly is 32% if your income is between 326,600 and 414,700. If your income is between 414,700 to 622,050, you're in the 35% bracket. And the highest bracket, 37%, are for those married individuals filing jointly with over $622,050. The next category is for unmarried individuals, single, widowed, etc. You're in the 10% bracket if you earn up to $9,875. For unmarried people with incomes between $9,875 to $40,125, you're in the 12% bracket. If you earn between $40,125 to $85,525, you're in the 22% bracket. If you earn $85,525 to $163,300, you're in the 24% bracket. 
if you earn between $163,300 to $207,350, you're in the 32% bracket. If you earn $207,350 to $518,400, you're in the 35% bracket. And if you make over $518,400, you're in the 37% bracket. I think most people are going to fall in either the married individuals filing jointly category or the unmarried individuals category. However, if you are a head of household, that's the third category. If you earn up to $14,100, you're in the 10% bracket. If your income is between $14,100 to $53,700, you're in the 12% bracket. If you have income between $53,700 to $85,500, you're in the 22% bracket. From $85,500 to $163,300, you'd be in the 24% bracket. At $163,300 to $207,350, you'd be in the 32% bracket. At $207,350 to $518,400, you're in the 35% bracket. And heads of households with income over $518,400 are in the 37% bracket. And the final category is for married individuals filing separately. If you earn up to $9,875, you're in the 10% bracket. Between $9,875 to $40,125, you're in the 12% bracket. Between $40,125 to $85,525, you're in the 22% bracket. Between $85,525 to $163,300, you're in the 24% bracket. If you earn $163,300 to $207,350, you're in the 32% bracket. And if you earn between $207,350 to $311,025, you're in the 35% bracket. And married individuals filing separately with income over $311,025 are in the 37% bracket. Now let's talk about your standard deductions for 2020. The standard deduction will be increasing next year. It's a set dollar amount by which a person's income is reduced before income tax is applied to the rest. Filers can opt to take the standard deduction, which is the same for everyone in the same filing status, or itemize their tax deductions each year. There are hundreds of possible itemized deductions including the mortgage interest deduction, and you'd only want to itemize if the total deduction was larger than the standard deduction. In recent years, some 70% of taxpayers took the standard deduction over itemizing, according to the Urban Brookings Tax Policy Center, and more are likely to now that the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which essentially doubled the amount of the standard deduction from previous levels, is fully in effect. Here are the standard deduction amounts for 2020. If you are married, filing jointly, your standard deduction is $24,800. If you are a head of household, your standard deduction is $18,650. If you're an unmarried individual, your standard deduction is $12,400. And married individuals filing separately, your standard deduction is $12,400. If you don't know which filing status you fall under, you can use a tool from the IRS. There are a few situations in which filers are not eligible to take the standard deduction, including if you are married filing separately and your spouse itemizes. Experts say the standard deduction makes more sense for most tax filers over itemizing deductions. This is especially true for young workers who likely have low salaries and rent an apartment or house there are many home-owning specific deductions that can be itemized. There will be new amounts for contributions to retirement plans as well, so I'll be keeping an eye out for that. One thing I would say you could do as a strategy, just as a takeaway, is to estimate what you think your income will be for 2020 and look at what bracket you're in and see how close you are to the bracket above you or the bracket beneath you. If you are close to the bracket below you, you might be able to be creative with either deductions or possibly deferring income into the next year, or maybe making retirement contributions so that that money 
doesn't get taxed. If you are close to the bracket below you, you'll want to do everything you can to get into that lower bracket and save a couple of percent in taxes. I will leave a copy of this article in the show notes so you can go through it. These are actually two articles together. So there is a link in there that goes from the income brackets to what the standard deductions are. And you can always check that out at lindapjones.com forward slash podcast, as well as all of the podcasts that I have there in our Wealth Mentoring Library for you. Just use the search box in the upper right hand corner and search for the topic of your choice. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available so you never miss any of them. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.